that's a question mark. Okay, well, if I don't want, like, if I don't care, then do I want it? And then I said, no. And I asked myself this question, talking to myself. And I'm just like, no, nah, I can oath I want it. I want it more than anything. But I'm cool if it doesn't happen. And then saying that, I'm like, now I'm super powerful. It doesn't matter if it doesn't happen. I don't, I'm not pressure. I don't, I'm, I've took taken that cloak of pressure off. So now if that cloak's not on my back, holding me down, I'm now- Gonna be able to go faster. I'm gonna be able to go faster. <laughs> it's that feeling of- And you're gone. the only one who can do that. Only before. one. Jed Oldschwager and Will Smith are Australian para rowing champions who've won international gold together. They're also in the same boat as men living with disabilities. Jed lost his leg in a workplace accident in 2015 and Will is visually impaired. People can say be resilient. Mm. That's cool. How do you be resilient? Like It's not like you can go down the shop and buy some or go to the gym and do 20 push-ups and you get resilience. Both have overcome intense adversity to become the champions they are today and they're hungry to take it even further this year in the hunt for spots on the Tokyo Paralympic team. It's mm. brutal, man. It's a brutal sport and that, that brutal, brutality is, is one of the blessings of it. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. They're wise enough to know it's about the journey, not the destination, but that doesn't mean they're not giving everything they've got to be the best. Do you take for granted how strong that makes you then? Mm, I tell you, it's like a superhero, man. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is big on fostering a positive mindset and winning attitude, and these two are the definition. Welcome to Young Blood, a podcast all about young men's health. My name's Callum McPherson, I'm a journalist, and this is our mission to talk about the stuff that matters and isn't talked about enough. Let's do it. So what bonds you guys together? Uh, well, probably initially rowing, mm. you'd have to say. Yeah, I mean, I think like we probably both came, I was a bit later because I had um, sort of moved into another thing, but like I've, I have been rowing for, for a long time, but I guess like the getting into like the power rowing side of it, I guess that it's probably yeah. where we have sort of like come yeah. into contact and started rowing together and sort of met each other essentially through that. So the way I so, yeah, feel as well is it's almost a matter of environment. Like Will is a I was I was a power rower trying to be a power rower coming up. Heard about this young fellow, Will Smith, who was doing his school thing, that sort of finished and so it was always probably a matter of time, but then what really has happened probably over the last 18 months or two, I don't know, two, you know, 18 months, two years is just like, mm. just even though where I'm like, I don't know how much old, I'm like 11 years older than you. Yeah. There's just a good solid bond there. Like just same humor, same yeah. just shit talk, you know, same level of um, commitment, but also also just sort of taking, taking life with a grain of salt as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, will do you too. see Jed sort of as like a, a mentor or just? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I think everyone in the in the, well, the whole community, but rowing community particularly, like, you know, looks up to Jed like very positive human and, you know, like very um, inspirational and just good value to have around in general. So Thanks, brother. For sure. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And Jed, what do you find inspiring about Will? That he just gives it a crack. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we could go into delve into the, the I guess, the impairment side of things. Um, I, probably the, the one of the biggest things for a vision impaired athlete is getting around, you know, like he's an absolute beast of human, extremely fit. He's got all that. But if you can't get yourself to training consistently, it's a, it's a it's, you're not going to be able to get to that level. So he's got that hurdle every day and every single day. It's not just like every now and then. It's every single day. How the hell do I get anywhere? I can't drive. So, yeah. Um, you know, you, you look at his resilience with that, but also, you know, it, like I said, it's water off a duck's back to him. Um, he's, you know, he's grown up, you know, without being able to see that well. And, and yeah, he, he, just the way that it's almost a non-issue and he just gets on with it. That's what I love. And just that, you know, the, the fact it's, it, you know, it's, you know, it's good mates. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. And then we're, what about Jay? What do you find inspiring about him? Um, we we're just sort of like the same, pretty much. Like the same concept really it's sort of like it's not you don't mm, you like don't really he doesn't really um see it see himself or anything like that as like a victim like he always just takes it you know is what it is and you just keep moving forward like you and i think that's a very like positive great attribute to have if you have some sort of impairment i mean you like you can't just you know let it define you or anything like you just, mm. you just have to sort of uh you know, like just take it with a with a pinch of salt and just keep moving forward, and that's what he does quite well, I think. So 
Yeah, roll with the punches. Exactly, yeah, exactly right. right. Yeah. And Jed, yeah. if you'd never lost your leg, yep. you wouldn't be the champion you are today. No. And you guys never would have come together. Mm-hmm. Does that trip you out? Yeah, dude. Oh, for all sure. the time, man. Like, mate, I was I was working in, you know, in construction with dusty boots and a hard hat <laughs> and high vis. Like Yeah, not that long ago. Either. Yeah, man. Like five years ago, four and a half years ago. Um so you know it always does and we always pinch ourselves like we always you know no matter what like every now and then every now and then we'll just be i might be driving with him or we might be somewhere having food or in a boat and we'd be like can you believe that we're doing this man (laughs) (laughs) so you know the obvious ones are like you might we might be in italy and like we're like on lake verese like paddling around and the swiss snowy capped alps alps there and we're like man can you believe that we're freaking doing this some dude just out of school whatever whatever what i'm doing but then even the simple thing, like it, it happens all the time. We pinch ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Tell me about that. What was that? How you feel? Oh, you have moments where you're just like, man, yeah. it's crazy. For sure. Like I think <clears throat> overseas especially, it's just sort of like, you, you know, you'll be sort of in the midst of it all and you're like, you know, you, you're doing what you need to do, but then you stop for a minute and just think like how, you know, if you'd have told me that I was doing this two years ago, um, I, you know, I would have been very surprised like, not you know i just would have, i just would have had no idea and i think you know that's exactly right like yeah. it's just it's just like sort of just snowballed into like this thing now where like i've got a really good opportunity to go to tokyo and um you know like i'm very grateful for like the opportunities i've been given and things like that so mm. and you guys are just going to these incredible places and working really hard to get there and then yeah. while you're there but then i suppose you also got to remember to take it in yeah man you know when you're breathing so hard and you're aiming for that line but yeah like mm. you're saying you've got mountains around you yeah, in man. these incredible places yeah actually pause for a second take that in and be like we put ourselves here it's yeah cool. mm. yeah spot on i think like um the longer i live you know the more life i get to go through like you really do start to be able to um ha- have more of that perspective and go like the amount of different chapters i've had in my life now uh is insane and i really feel like i've you know i've got it i'm not even halfway there and so well, you're still young you're 35 aren't you 30 what 35 <laughs> <laughs> what am I? 33, oh, 33. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm 33 so you look um, wise beyond your years thanks man it's the gray hair it's speckled <laughs> everywhere <isn't> it? <laughs> so it just you know I, it's just life's long and and you know, you don't know what's going to come around the corner and, you know, it could be bad, it could be good, but, you, you know, make every, you know, make the most of everything and that's kind of, you know, what we're doing. And, you know, in our in our game, in, a, in anyone's elite sporting game, it, it, the downs can be hard. Like you can work your absolute ass off and get pinched and, and get, you know, not make it or whatever. And it's just, you know, if, if you aren't then take, you know, if you're not through that journey, if you're not taking in the roses and smelling, you know, mm-hmm. looking at the sights, then what's the point because you, you know you really got to sort of enjoy it for what it is because regardless of what happens at the end you know you may not have control over it may not fall your way so. i guess that's the beauty of it though isn't mm-hmm. it with sport especially is uh it doesn't matter how hard you work or how talented you are if things don't fall in the place it might not happen mm-hmm. and then if you do get it it might be taken away so that's why you gotta relish it i, I imagine while, mm-hmm. while you have it but yeah if that wasn't the case then you wouldn't appreciate it as much as well yeah so yeah. Is that sort of how you feel about it too? Will? Yeah, definitely. And I think like back to that, like rowing takes you to some pretty, pretty amazing places. I think like some, you know, all through Europe and and the states. Obviously, like it's one of the biggest, um, like internationally speaking. Like it's a very, like a lot of countries participate. So you know, there's a lot of opportunities there to travel, um, to places that like you know. You probably would never have thought you're going and um, meet people hey like oh for sure all yeah of that sort Definitely. of stuff and, yeah and and being in the elite sporting world even just in this country like so even the crossover and people that you meet in different sports like it's just it's epic and mm-hmm. t- making you know they're they're the sort of things that i go i wouldn't have met that dude you know like mm. i wouldn't have met that shooter or i wouldn't have met that kayaker if i hadn't wanted been doing this and yeah that sort of stuff is good yeah there's so many different branches i think that like you gain from doing um, you know, elite sport, like yeah, putting yourself on the line for right? sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you're just privy, privy to that whole world, mm. and you have to earn it. Like you're putting in this tremendous amount of work that 99.9 percent of the population isn't going to put in, and that's why you're there. Mm. Um, Spot on. But mm. yeah, yeah, it must just be incredible to 
realize, oh, I'm here with this person or I met that guy and they're really inspiring or you know, she's incredible and then reflect on yourself and be like, oh, hold on, I'm one of them. <laughs> That's why I'm here. That's it's so special. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, so Jed, just tell us a bit about losing your leg. And- yeah, so I lost my leg in 2015, yep, 2015 in August around then, um, just in a workplace accident, basically had a machine roll over and crush my left foot. Uh, rush that was obviously a crazy experience in itself just that you know hour or so um, being under the machine and all that rushed to hospital um, had you know met my wife there uh, had uh, you know a friend meet us there my mother-in-law was there had it taken well they tried to see if they could put it back together had it taken off that night um, you know and that's basically kind of when it began and you know I remember waking up about 11 o'clock getting rushed to the other room and Jess was there waking me up you know wondering whether I'd remember or forget and I remembered and, you know, it was a pretty sort of hazy, cloudy couple days there, especially pretty juiced up and and all the rest of that, you know. So once once that sort of started to clear, I just really knew I, I had to get on top of it um, and that's really when the journey began for me and, um, you know, instead of sitting there and being a victim or sitting there and, and blaming or hating or anything like that, it was a push those you know, emotions to the side and started to look for opportunities and, and circumstances that would favour me in in that gnarly situation, even though it was five, four days prior. So yeah. it was a good- And you didn't even lift back then? I didn't even lift back then, man. <laughs> Dude, there's a photo of me in the hospital bed and I was like to my mate, I was like, he worked at a surf, uh, uh, what do you work? He worked at Rebel, um, like a sports store. And yeah. he basically was like, I was like, man, I want to get, I need to get fit. I need to get healthy. I need to be light. Like I need to be as strong as I can be. You know, it's gonna be. It's gonna, and I was like, I need you to go to your, that store of yours and get me one of those stretchy band thingies, <laughs> and I'm gonna tie it to this bed. And I'm just there, just lifting this. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I had no idea. rotator cuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'd never stepped foot into a gym, man, until yeah. rehab. Two weeks later, you know, for my first day in rehab, and I'm wheeling in, and that was the first gym I'd seen, you know, and first ever, anything. So from there, it was the biggest opportunity that stuck out with me was was. Um, you know uh, the physical how quickly quickly you can lose literally lose a piece of you mm. um and how important your body is and so that was a big light for mine like i didn't drink for about 18 months after my accident just to stay uh, you know in a good mental space but also for fitness and just it snowballed wickedly positive from there and what yeah. actually flipped that switch for you for going from someone who uh you know wasn't all that physically active like i know that you surfed and yeah that sort of stuff but yeah. you were never like a gym nah. guy never pushing yourself physically yeah and then pretty much overnight decided, yeah, I'm going to become that. Like, what? What was it? What it was, was almost. Uh, it was almost logical, right? I, I I literally was reading that if I want to live a happy life and and be able to get around, and when I eventually have kids, and I've got kids now, but at that stage when I eventually have kids, be able to keep up and all that, I was like, I need. You need to lose weight. I need to be strong. I need to be as light as I can be. Like it was almost those three things like, echoing in my head. And go, all right, let's do it. And and it was that from there. It was like, okay, now I'll learn about rehab. And and then I started just to learn about the fitness world. And 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 then when you start to do some things like that, you start to feel better. Yeah. So I started to feel incredible. Like I said, um, you know, I stayed off the gas for uh, eighteen months and and really stayed very clean because it was long. That physical side was happening, but also I was dealing with the mental side. So I wanted to stay really on point as I could. And um, so that was the main flips, you know, like the switch flipping. Why there. did it take losing your leg to get there, though? Did you, did you, in the back of your mind, you knew you wanted to make some changes before probably, that? Or? Probably not physical. Because that doesn't, like, doesn't help you physically to like lose your leg and then nah, decide, okay, nah, I'm nah, going to nah. do like all this fitness <laughs> stuff now. Like, well, that was like three steps backwards, yeah, one step yeah. forward. No, honestly, like before, uh, you know, I was happy before I was going through life and enjoying, you know, I was 28 and, and, and doing my thing, surfing occasionally, drinking beers, playing music, being, you know, just married at the time, um, still am. But, um, you know, uh, there was really no, I, I, I never, the one thing, it was never a fitness thing for me. The one thing that I was getting at when, when I was turned 28 and staring down the barrel of 30, this is probably going beyond the fitness thing. It was more of a really deep down me, spiritual thing, whatever you want to call it. But I was like, with the job I was doing, I was there for about eight, nine years. I loved it, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, I know there's more in this world for me. I want to do more. I don't know what the fuck it is, but, you know, mm. I really want to do more. I don't know what it is. And just the way the universe works, I'm not saying it, it is what it is, but, you know, a year later of having really those gut feelings, I lose my leg. You know, I get tested. And and you can see it as, as, as blatant as, okay, he lost his legs by a machine, but... I see it as getting tested and I am so grateful for the test. So, 
you know, it was that test that made me then, because if you're tested and you can get through the test, then obviously you're stronger on the other side. Mm. And that really is what happened to me. And, and, and I, I had to em employ everything that I had in my body. People say, were you so positive before? Yeah, I was. I was extremely positive. I didn't just flip the switch and turn into this extremely positive guy. I was mm. always positive. I had a really, my, my parents are amazing. You know, they've always brought me up to be grateful and thankful. And you had to really stand up and employ it. Yeah, I, I had to and search mm. for it and deal with emotions and grind through it. But yeah, it was a test and, and that's kind of what it was. Will, what do you think of the way Jed responded to that? Yeah, I think like like a pretty um, extraordinary way of, 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 you know, like like he says, took four days. And I guess, you know, in that, like I can't, I've no way of like <clears throat> saying that I can relate to this, but I guess that what it is is like there would perhaps be two roads. One is like a positive road and one might be a negative road and he just didn't even like ponder to taking the negative road. He just totally like threw himself at, you know, a, a journey which would obviously like eventuate into what it is now, but like he just totally took the first step right away and didn't even second guess himself i think that's very impressive you know like, mm. you, you've got to be able to relate to that though yourself like, oh for sure like you know my my you know s situation is like very different but can you just talk about it a bit and explain it what it is yeah so basically i've got um albinism so that, what that means is i'm so i've got like vision uh loss um ever so i've so i've had it since i was born so i, I don't really know like I've, it's not like I'd lost sight or anything over a, a period of time. Like it's always sort of been like this. Yeah, but, um, so you guys are different in that way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but the thing is with me, especially going back to the family thing, like I've got three siblings and I was just another sibling, you know, like I went to the same school and I basically did the same things. I didn't play footy or anything like that, but I, you know, like we grew up on a farm and it was pretty like rough and tumble with my brother and, you know, like I'd, like all friends from around there and it was just you know i like it wasn't really like i was segregated from you know other kids my age or anything like it was just i was you know someone else and that's sort of something that i have i think i'm so grateful for mm. and i think that it's so important for people that are sort of born with some sort of uh <clears throat> like some sort of impairment that i think that like the best thing you can do as you know, like perhaps a parent or like a, just anyone in their support circle is just treat them as, you know, like obviously accommodate for their needs, but like very much just treat them as like a another kid really. Mm. I think that's just so beneficial, you know, in the long term. Um, so that's sort of like in the, in the regard yeah. to like the, um, like yours, you know, you took the positive road. I think I've, got my family and friend and like family friends to thank for that they sort of helped me get there in, mm. in in a way so yeah so how much is your vision impaired i don't actually know like the percentage but obviously i can't drive so that's like that's probably that is probably like the biggest issue with the with the impairment not an issue but just like the biggest hurdle so what so you know i just have to and obviously like the um the government have the government have things in place so i i'm you know i'm allowed to get like 12 hours of week driven around which is like so helpful um and then you know just like work around what i need to do i just gotta like do what i need to do and things like that but that is essentially like probably the biggest hurdle but i do like i've going through school and things like that i just had to make sort of uh make um adjustments and things like that so all my school work would be put digitally onto a computer and i just get it onto my computer all my work would be sent to me textbooks and things online like i just zoom up that's the same that it is now with uni because I'm, I'm study at um adelaide so yeah. it's uh it's all basically it's all, all digital except for exams and that's just in large paper so um you basically big table <laughs> it's quite funny actually i was tried my first semester of uni i um i was because all the adelaide uni um exams are done at wayville and i went there and i had a big paper with a with a desk probably about the size <laughs> of this mat and my paper's like there <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> i just looked at the invigilator 
this ain't happening. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, so then pretty much thereafter, I'd, I'd go to the uni and I'd, I'd be doing it in like a, in a room with basically it's just me and like a whole bunch of international students. So it's pretty chilled. I'm like pretty grateful. I've got my own room. All my, all my friends are just like, bastard, you got yeah. your own room. <laughs> but no, so that's sort of the bottom line and that's what it is. Um, okay. Yeah. So other than the not being able to drive there, what's it meant for your life? Like if you, has it meant that you've struggled, uh, you know, socially in any way or something? Any of that yeah. Sort of stuff? I mean, I don't really like not, not in the sense that like it's inhibited me from doing what everyone else is doing. I think that um, obviously like socially in the sense that not being able to drive, like in, in that sense, that's like a little bit like come into social, the s- social side of things because I need to like, make adaptions to get around yeah so obviously there's that but um you know in terms of like i've got a good a good sort of uh group of friends and and things like that so i I think that you know honestly and like coming back to what i said like it just pretty much all points to my upbringing like the way that i was sort of brought up in as to like i you know i don't have i'm not restricted i mean i am but like you know i can't think that i yeah am in a sense so i think for, for me and this is one thing that i've been playing with in my head lately is like impairments right so we're i've got an impairment we have got an impairment it's very mm. visual you can see it you know about it or mm. whatever but like this is going back to you know we'll keep saying the way you brought up it's it's that it's like if you get brought up in the frame of mind that it's a non-issue and i'm just going to get by or whatever it's like for him to answer, you know what I mean? There's no, there's no issue there. It's like, yeah, I just, I get on with it. I'm not playing a victim. Yeah. Some of the biggest impairments, you know, I really st- am starting to see. And some of the biggest impairments in life that people really come up with aren't physical, man. Like, you know what I mean? They're really, a, there's something in the head. That there's, yeah. that they're the things that stop, they're the blockers that, that stop you being social or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if you've, if you, you've got, not, you know, if you've got a physical impairment or not, if you can uh, think around that, then it's a non-issue. Yeah, so it's for you. Well, it's big on sort of how you perceive it, and obviously, absolutely, and how mm. you look at it, mm. because the reality is the reality, and you have to accept that either way. Mm, for but sure. being positive about it and seeing it the way you do, you're still making that choice to to view it like that, which yeah. is which is powerful and allows you to go and do what you want to do. But there will still be other people who think like, oh, you know, I couldn't do that, or. But it sounds like what you're saying is that's the it's the attitude, that's the issue in that case. Anyway, mm. it's not actually mm. necessarily what the the physical yeah problem is yeah Mm. yeah but in saying that like i think that there is sometimes you know sometimes you might not feel 100 percent, but that's fine you know that's okay as long i think the most important thing and i think this is very important with mental health in general is that like you if you've got like an awareness of yourself Mm. like that it's like probably the most important thing because as soon as you can start to recognize that you know okay maybe like maybe i should take it a bit bit easier today because like you know like I've had a bit of an average week or something like I think that if you can just recognize the issue but when it's sort of starting to um develop like I think that's be kind huge. to yourself absolutely yeah and just recognize the issue and then just stop it before it snowballs into you know some sort of I mean like I'm a pretty positive guy but I think that like if you if you let a negative thought sort of manifest and you don't sort of recognize that it's there like it it will it'll get you down, I think, essentially. So Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. that can happen to anyone no matter sure. how, how positive Absolutely. you are. Mm. Yeah. Because you can yeah. be all positive guys, but you can't be positive all, all the time. No. no. And nor should you exactly. sort of try to be as well. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Uh, so what strength do you feel like you've drawn through your disability, Jed? You know, almost touched on it there, self-awareness or resilience, just the ability to be able to digest through my emotions um, and not just sit on something. So... Um, exactly, you have shitty days and, and stuff come up, but probably what keeps getting me going and getting getting me through things is 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 digesting through them. Why do I feel like this and acknowledging that, but then moving on and then and then also on on the on the same breath find something I'm grateful for. Um, that pattern there is literally what I did day by day, especially when I first lost my leg. You know, it'd be something would come up. Okay, why do I feel like this? Let's find something to be grateful for and. You know, at the start, it was things like 
my knee. I'd be like, well, it could have been worse. I lost my knee, you know. Shout out to all the above knees out there. Sorry. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> everything's everyone's got their own personal journey. Um, but, you know, it, it was that. It was like, all right, I can get up and go for a coffee. It was simple shit. But, you know, I always found that stuff to be grateful for and thankful for. And that tool is probably the biggest strength. And, you know, there's other a, a few other things, I guess. But just getting back to the way, you know, getting the fact that I, I was tested and gone through that test. A lot's come out of it and shown me, you know, who I am as a human being, as a, as a mate, as a dad, as a father, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a husband, you know, and, mm. and then also wanting to keep bettering that. So, yeah. And does having an impairment bring into focus or heighten what you do have? Like you think For more sure. about what your attributes are and all the things that you do have and you talk about gratitude, but mm. brings that more into focus than mm. perhaps if you never had to think about it? Yeah. Do you find that? Yeah, I, I do. I found I find basically whether whether it's the loss of the leg or whatever it is, but I feel that the fact that I was tested, my backup was up against the wall. It was like, what else do I have in my toolkit, you know, to get me through? What other physical? Okay, you know, it, it was first. It was, I don't need to be fit, light, and strong. And you know, on the physical side, it's down that rabbit hole. And let's learn about fitness. And then on the mental side of things, like you know, how how do we manifest gratitude? How do I grow that? Like yeah. figuring that out. You know, not really knowing it. People can say be resilient. Mm. That's cool. How do you be resilient? Like it's not like you can go down the shop and buy some, or go to the gym and do twenty push ups and you get resilience. It's yeah. it's a different kettle of fish. It's not as tangible as getting fit or eating well. Um, so that has probably mm. me deciphering that has probably been in my mind, probably the coolest part for me is like figuring that stuff out and I'm still completely figuring it out. But that's the area I love and want to do more of and spread more of, yeah. Mm. And where are you at on that stuff, Will, in terms of your mindset and sort of your own resilience and stuff? How do you view things? Yeah, well, um, you know, I think that's a very fair point. Um, obviously, you develop it over time. It's not one of those things that you can just acquire. Um, resilience is, is one of those things where if, if you have some sort of – impairment i think from a young age like i generally have had a pretty good resilience because like because mm. there's always been some sort of hurdle and you know you just go okay well like um most so for example like, like it becomes second nature to you for sure so like what it will be is like primary school um you'd get like a i'd get you know perhaps some some work and then i'd and then say okay well this is too hard to read give it to the teacher okay can i have this enlarged um, well, they'd, do, they'd generally be pretty good anyway, but if, if they had forgotten, like, oh, I need this enlarged, and then I'd have to do that um, at a time where perhaps like, other kids were yeah, other, like other kids were finished up or yeah. like and like, other kids home, didn't for example, kids didn't, didn't even have to do, do that. that. Yeah. No, you exactly. always had to do that. Yeah. So, and so I get what you mean with saying, yeah. like, I just thought that was, you know, that became yeah. second nature, became yeah. normal, but you accepted that resilience so much and was so used to mm. it you didn't even see it as that no That's why he was. just he oozes it man before when you asked us earlier on or like what you know it is about well it's that it's like it like it's non-thing it's like yeah whatever man like you know mm. what I mean? say water off a duck's yeah back. it's fully like that yeah. couldn't be more of an example dude like i've had to foster and develop it for sure i wasn't yeah. tested like those kids weren't tested yeah you know, no. that he's talking about but so, he's no, tested no. you just sort of from when the you, start yeah, from the exactly start. it's sort of just yeah. built in because it's there from day one yeah you know, like it's just you just sort of so do you do you take for granted how strong that makes you then mm. tell you it's like a superhero man <laughs> 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 but it does that's weird the way i think about it but yeah, yeah. i mean you know like i i, I not really like i, I don't know well, if, you're, if, you're, if you're if you're faced with a, a problem like whatever it might be, yeah. Like, how do you view it, or what's the first thought that comes to mind with it? Like, um, how often do you, are you saying, "Oh, I don't, I, I can't do this"? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I, I guess in that sense, like, I, I, tr I am, you know, I, I, I guess I have developed a strength over like the last twenty years of being alive, like with this impairment. Like, I, I basically um, have had hurdles like the whole time and i guess yeah like it has developed some strength there for sure and I'm, i guess the more you can overcome them the more evidence you have that you can do that too yeah and i think that's very like a very important thing with um resilience mental health like some other i don't know i was watching like it was like david goggins things and he refers to some like mental tool as like the cookie jar and you just pull something out of the cookie jar like if you're struggling it's like okay well like i did this 
I did this like two years ago and that was pretty cool. Like, like a reference point. Exactly, for sure. And you just like bring those points up and you're like, well, I got through that. So like, mm. why can't I do that, you know? Yeah. And so then when it comes to being in the boat together, drawing on that kind of strength or reaching into that cookie jar, you mm. find that there's plenty of cookies in there. Yes, full yeah, of cookies. Yeah, a lot of cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's obviously that's part of what's allowing you guys to be great now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, because rowing and, and pushing yourselves to that level is you know, one of the ultimate tests of your mental and physical endurance and your what you're able to do physically is a manifestation of your minds. Mm. So mm-hmm. what you've been through has sort of sharpened you into what you are now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fuck, I felt like Dr. Phil just then. Yeah. That was- <laughs> <laughs> that was- killed that line. That was awesome. Uh, what's that little voice in your head say, like when you guys get up in the morning or when you're pushing it in the boat? Or when you don't feel like training, what does the little voice say? Mine's generally, how far can I take this? How, how how hard can I go? How hard can I push? How far can I take it? I've probably in the last four years definitely fallen in love or, or really found a comfortable place with sitting uncomfortably, you know, being uncomfortable and yeah. pain. And, um, you know, I don't think, you know, there are there's going to be sports that are equal to it, but rowing is one of them that – it hurts like it's it's a long time to be going at threshold and and so it was almost like it's just amazing that i found myself into this sport but that's it it's how far can i push myself how hard can i go and and yeah you know because it seems like as a um, spectator with rowing it's always going to the limit and then whoever can go over that and mm. find a new limit is going to win or that's mm. what the sport seems to yeah be it's essentially just who can suffer the longest like yeah in a race setting, on, yeah. yeah, who can put you know? It's it's there's many analogies like who can hold the hand on the flame the longest and all of that because that's what mm. it is. Like there's nothing like the middle 15, 1200 of a of a race. You know, the end, the starts the start and and the ends the end. You cooked by the end, but you you always get you get over the line, whatever it finishes. But that middle part is you've got to com- be composed. You got to you know it starts to hurt and you've got to row well, otherwise it falls to shit. And mm-hmm. there's just nothing else quite like it, you know, that I'm sure, you know, there, like I said, there'd be other sports, but um, f- for me, it's just, you know, and as pe- as humans do in human nature, we relate things to things. And so you can find so many um, points to relate it back to life and, mm-hmm. and, you know, how to apply yourself to certain situations. And for me, using the whole leg thing, getting over that, I've used the tools in that for rowing and then vice versa. And it's just like a, yeah, it's a full cookie jar. Mm-hmm. And what's the beauty in that? In those moments, you know, in that middle fifteen, or yeah, uh, you know, what, what, what comes out of going past that limit and finding a new one? Like you do things that you didn't perhaps think that you could, like thought, like that you would have thought possible of yourself. Um, like you can definitely push yourself a lot harder than perhaps, and I think that I think that sort of barrier extends itself. Um, like the more, like the more elite you get at a sport is you know you're able to take yourself to like different places um physically and mentally during a race particularly mm. um but why what do you what do you get out of doing that why why seek to do it again and again and again especially you know after you've done it once and you've proved you can do it and mm. you know why you keep chasing that yeah feeling um well yeah i mean i, I guess it's it's very rewarding in the sense that you know, you can show yourself that you're capable of something that you didn't think that you were, you know, like I, I guess. Mm. Um, is that all about showing yourself and how it makes you feel about yourself as a human or is it about showing other people or what's your what drives you guys to keep going? Maybe a bit of both. A bit of me. both, I yeah. think. Yeah, a bit of both for sure. Yeah, I, I, I think like for me it always has been like how far can I push this and take this? Like that was the whole idea of getting into para sport at the start. Like I went from rehab gym to – I like CrossFit. You know, I saw it on Instagram. Said I want to go do that. Did that for eight months, eighteen months, two years, and loved that. And then it was like Paris Sport. Like okay, how far? I was literally like, how far can I take this? You know, how fit can I get? How how all of that? You know, and and then on the flip of that, it's you know, it, it's also nice to um, you know, especially your family and friends, and and especially when you get to our level and there's an extreme amount of sacrifice that you mm. that your family and friends see you take, and you know they have to take for you. And it's nice to be able to, you know, to, to do the work and, and show them, you know, what can be done. And then the on-flow effect on that on a social, you know, further, you know, more is, is, is also there as well. So, 
Yeah. For me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because there is such a sacrifice. So I guess that's why mm. why I ask. Because you got to have that burning desire in you that's just greater than just about anyone else to mm. want to do it. Mm. So do you think you're both just wired that way? Or have you just fallen in love with it so completely? Or like, can you put it into words, Will? A bit of both again. I think it definitely has developed um, a lot over the last few years. But you're right. Like, I think it's... I think it's very much a case of like I want to show myself that I can do that and, you know, like the on-floor effect with family, you know, like mm. would, you, would you agree on that? Yeah, yeah I don't, like for me, so literally it was it was my accent. Like if you want to say if a flip was switched to the accident, that's probably one of them that was like, so before accident and I think a lot of people stay in this place, life was super comfortable. Like when I say that I've started to fall in love with the pain and, and the, you know, it's okay mm. to you know eat some shit yeah. and taste mm. the dirt you know okay. so are you in love with growing then maybe yeah yep exactly mm. in love that's with very growing. well put actually sitting yeah. stagnant and comfortable is super easy to do and at 28 when you've had your crazy 20s you know early late teens 20s and you're starting to stay down the barrel and you're still probably pushing stuff you shouldn't be pushing um going there's more to this why is it you know that's when i was that's that's kind of for me and then the accident happened. It was just like yeah, rewired, like like what? How can I grow? And and the uh, the amount of growth mentally, and then the physical yeah. scene, but the, you know, on both is is crazy amounts, man. Like, and that's why I can sit back. And I think it was six months after my accident, I said, I am fucking better off, man. Like, I have I am way better a person. I feel can't, like the, the things that I'm experiencing every day, the emotions and everything. I'm in a better place. I've lost my leg. I'm still figuring the walking situation out, but I'm good. You know, and that was just like, that was when it transcended for me body and blood. It was like, it's just body and blood. Like, that's when it really became a mental thing for me and going, you can be whatever. That's why a guy in a, in a wheelchair that can't move any of his limbs can be the happiest human being in the life, like world. Like, I've met humans like this. It's like, that's why the physical is just the physical. If you can control the, men the mental and grow that, mm. that's, you know, and not Absolutely. live stagnant and comfortable. I was definitely stagnant and comfortable. And a lot of people probably continue to, the whole life like that. That's why people maybe have marriage breakdowns or um, midlife crisis or regrets when they get older. And it's, yeah, part of that. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm grateful for the test. Right. So it sounds like you found the meaning of life in it. Yeah. Like, not to sound like, you know, nah. be a dick over no, it, but no. that sort of sounds <laughs> no, like well, sure. you, you found that thing. Yeah. Well, it came, which I think like rowing seems like it's the manifestation or how you let yeah. it out. But it's really like the principle of it, of mm. wanting to drive forward, because that makes you guys feel alive. Mm. For sure, yeah. yeah. It's the feeling of the feeling alive. Like where, mm. it, it's it, for me, it's not like I didn't grow up with rolls on my wall. Like it, it, it's just a, it, it's you know, uh, it's it's a manifestation, it's an expression, it's the catalyst. Like it could be anything, and yeah. it will be something else after rolling too. It's not done. Like it won't be done ever. So that's that's what it's about. Yeah, mm. that's beautiful, man. I can see you like you're fired up. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, but that's the thing that everyone you know, whether they know they want it or don't, or if they felt it before or they haven't, it's that like mm. whatever that is mm. inside you. You've got to find a way that to express it and get yeah. it out. And then if you have it, uh, it's, I think it's pretty obvious to other people, and that's when you inspire people as yeah. well. And they think, how do I find whatever that is? Mm. But um, it seems like the you know, the devastation that you went through with losing your leg uh, just like, kicked you into gear yep. and made you think about, all right, what is my life going to be? And sort of let's take this a bit more seriously yeah. uh, because, it, you know, life's not, uh, it's not owed to us. It's not, nah. you know, tomorrow is not promised sort of yep. thing. All of that, man. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Those emotions were thick and fast, like those feelings of overwhelming. Like, I, you know, I walked out of the hospital and, and, I just, you know, literally not walked, I didn't, I got wheeled out of the hospital to go to rehab for two weeks and just felt gratitude, man, like to to the hospital. Like, you know, it was just, I had, I didn't have any control over these emotions and feelings. It was mm. literally just bombarded every day. And like, that's what I was just like, this is incredible, man. And even now I feel like it's quietened. And I think about back in that time, I'm like, that was a powerful time. Like, like that, those three to six to nine months were powerful dude and i'm mm. just like so just keep those juices going because you don't on. you don't lose that though like no. if you get through mm. a situation like that it stays with you mm. and i think that partly is what gives you the will to be a champion because you can draw on something like that and it yeah. just gives you that yeah grunt yeah i would imagine like yeah, to man. drive at the end 
And so, yeah, Will, what's the voice in your head when you have days where you're like, I, you know, I'd rather not train today or, um, you know, just when you get up in the morning or, or whatever it is, what, mentally, what are you often saying to yourself? Yeah, so I'm... Um, Jed will have to row the single if I don't go. <laughs> 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 I, think so. um, I, you know, like I think as well, like I'm a big advocate for developing as a person and growing and just learning about yourself. Um, like th- for me as well, because I was pretty serious with rowing um, through school, but this is like a completely different world. And then obviously going from like having a year off to getting into this sport, which is, you know, pr- it's intense and, and waking up some mornings and thinking, wow, like I, you know, I, it's not that I don't want to do this, but like I'm, um, you know, like it's pretty uncomfortable right now mm-hmm. to get up and row, but like that's, it's actually almost like pretty addictive. Like I, for example, like a few, so it was like this time last week, I actually got, I had like a flu um, and I, and when sort of you get crook, with rowing, you really have to just submit yourself to to like the sickness essentially, or it'll just sort of come back. Jed will yeah. tell you all about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I and and so basically, what I'm getting at is I had to spend four days like in bed, no exercise, and you start to like lose your mind, <laughs> lose, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. lose yourself. Yeah, you do that. for sure. Like you, I think it's so important, and I for sure like i think having that physical outlet is just like everyone everyone on the planet should be doing some sort of exercise like it's so beneficial like relative to not exercising and living in it like your daily life like you just feel exponentially better Mm. Um, and how much do you think that makes your mind stronger having that physical outlet and having that physical test because mm. generally if you're committed to something physical whether it's a sport or a routine you're doing it pretty much every day and mm. it's uncomfortable every time so what's the benefit of going through that and actually making that happen as opposed to not it's almost like the seven steps to success thing it's like you know the first thing you do make your bed um i think that with me like exercise has sort of become a big part of that in like my daily routine because it's you know it's what we have to do but i think it'll stay there forever realistically because you know i feel as though i just feel so much better i can concentrate like studying as well like i um even the like the periods in which i wasn't rowing um i would exercise in the morning and then and then study and it it would everything would just be a lot more a lot clearer and things like that like i could concentrate um for extended Mm. period of time just growth just growth, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well. I yeah. think that's you know like the biggest aspect of it all. So yeah, makes you feel like yourself for sure. Mm. Yeah, doing it. Uh, how do you see yourselves as men at this stage in your lives? Yeah. Obviously, will your? I mean, sorry, uh, Jed, you're much much older. Yeah, much. much older. <laughs> it's funny, <laughs> man, because I, I think it's pretty cool. Like situation, we were kind of touched on before. So where we row, we got you know it's a lot of under twenty threes. You know, Will's age and mm. a little bit younger. Um, and so I get to see, you know, like, you know, and, and they've, you know, people have said and said, you know, I love, you know, you've been around, but it's a great, you know, um, influence or whatnot. But like on the flip that I kind of get from the young guys, you know what I mean? Especially seeing how dedicated I was not. Like I've said it to Will so many times, man. I wasn't 20 years old going, ga- coming six days a week, like three sessions a day. Mm. I was not doing that. I was getting in my car and I was surfing and I was like saving money for holidays and trips and, you know, it was different and just seeing that level of, of commitment and it happens from school. Like that. Once they leave school, it's insane. So, mm. you know, seeing that is, is I, I applaud that. But, you know, where I see myself as, as a guy, um, as, a, as a male, you know, as a, and how I relate to that is a father and a husband and a mate um, and a son is, you know, I, I feel like, I'm I'm in a good place and I feel like I'm value adding to the people around me. Um, but I really, really do feel that, you know, everyone's got their vices and their things that they need to work on and I'm 100% that. And a lot of the crew that, you know, we row with, I've said to them many times, the young people is like, I'm 31, 32, so, no, 33. <laughs> I'm 27, man. <laughs> it's coming down as a, yeah. it's coming still, down as a podcast goes. Yeah, yeah. Still got time. <laughs> but it's that um, I've made every single like fuck up 
every single one, probably 20 times more than any, you know what I mean? Like you really do. And I I've, I've still make shitty decisions, um, but it's that continuing to want to get better. And then once I've had kids, it's like looking at them in the eyes, just going, oh, dude, daddy can't be that guy. Like I, I need to be this guy. I need to be this guy for you. And, and mm. you know, to, to your wife, the same thing. And yeah, you still stuff up, you know, and I have, but it's like, it's just that wanting to be able to get better and grow. That accountability. Accountability, man. Like, and, and you kind of go through this wild stage when, you, you know, I, again, I think that every period of life is there for a reason and, and all for that crazy 17 to 26, you know, I, I really believe that you should shed your skin and have a ball and do whatever it is with respect to everyone around you, but do whatever it is that you need to do. Um, but then there becomes kind of this, yeah. Like a lull. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. it's time to move on and mm. it's a very hard thing to let go of. As and it's well. weird for guys, man, because I've seen it, with me i was one like it and also i've seen a lot of friends they get to this point where they don't want to they want to move on but they can't move on from, through that whether you want to call it party life or whatever it is and it's a very sticky tough thing and mm. sometimes relationships fall apart because of because they built they, around it yep yeah and, and it's crazy so yeah it's just crazy all of that and so that's why it's just you know you got to realize things evolve things change and opportunities come up and there's different chapters in life yeah. yeah, and get the most out of each chapter each when chapter, it comes. Man. But you also have a, a lot of credibility to talk about that stuff to younger guys now because you've yeah. actually been through it. I've been through it, yeah. yeah. Will, do you feel like you're missing out on any of that at all by being so dedicated from the start? Yeah, I mean, well, like I, I think I had I had a, I had a pretty Still good- Still doesn't mind a party. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pretty good. solid gap year there in 2018. Yeah. Okay, glad um, to hear that. So, you know, I've had like I've had a good time. I went traveling and things like that with friends um, and- you know, um, all through South America and things like that. So I'm, I'm not. I so don't, rowing hasn't robbed you of your young no, experience. No, no, for sure. And I think that it's so beneficial. Like I, th I also think that if I didn't have rowing, I'd be a lot more of a basket case. <laughs> 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 I think rowing keeps me a little bit yeah. sometimes. Oh so. yeah, you got to pick and choose your battles, man. I, I, we say it often, like, uh, like. You know, let's all lay it out. Like, you, as a, like, he is, you know, you're young, man. And you don't want to get to 20, 35 and be like, friggin' hell, I didn't do I this. I never or did it. But yeah, yeah. when you're also you're so young, if you're aware of that, you can kind of plot it a bit and go, yeah, okay, you know, maybe I might take some time off here and do this or travel now. And, you know, he's got options. Like, I'm, as far as me, like, this may be my last Paralympic crack. I might go, who knows, but I'm going to be older. Mm. You know, he's got, so it's just like ch pick and choose your, what you want to do. And for yeah. sure. And just I think do rowing. It better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's, I think rowing like this intense, intense period for me. Like, I think it's, it's so good because it gives you that sort of distinction between like, okay, like maybe I need to pull it together and like lock into uni for, for this amount of time and then get back into rowing and then take some time off or whatever. You know, it mm. gives me a good grounding, I think. Yeah. At a time where we can be very up in the air, when absolutely, especially if it's, and you have that discipline where it's like you got to rock up every morning, you got to get in mm. the way, you got to do this, and you got to live this way to, in order to be able to do this. So that's definitely. all sort of set out for you. Absolutely, but that's it's hard. I, this young time in our lives, you know, especially after school and then after uni as well, where it's sort of up to you. Mm. At a time when our brains are still developing and there's lots of fun, exciting stuff happening around us, mm. it's easy to get lost in that as well. So absolutely, I think I'm so grateful for rowing for sort of having like giving me that perspective of, you know, hard work and just sort of knowing when it's time to get things done. Yeah. Um, and, and it flows on to the rest of your life. Like I'm sure you're pretty good with your studies as well. Yeah, yeah. A lot more productive than previous, like prior to, um, you know, intense like elite sporting. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And so when you guys are tearing through the water and winning gold mm. medals, is that the peak for you now or is it actually before that when you – going through the journey or how would you sort of describe I'm, that? I'm tough question because obviously mm. it's great to be, you know, to getting across the line, but I'm big on the journey, man. Like yeah. love that shit. Like love it all. Love rocking mm. up, you know, on a Monday it might be shitty because it's a Monday or whatever, but you get through it and just all the conversations you have and the development you have and we have and the mm. fun you have, Yeah, you know, it doesn't all boil down to that, you know, seven minute race. It's only seven minutes, but mm. then the tense and amazing crazy feeling that you get when you have that race is insane so mm. it's it's both but i'm um, definitely journey yeah i think that jed's like perspective on that has sort of rubbed off me a little bit i always used to think 
especially going through the schoolboy program, you know, like it's still pretty intense, but it's all about head of the river and it's all about national championships and it's all about that six minutes, you know. Uh, you know, obviously, like you develop and pretty Saints cool. always wins. Yeah. yeah. Saints <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, not really. Well, I PSC sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. I went to Scotch. So we oh, did you? Oh, nice. <laughs> they didn't win. They might win this year. Yeah. They might look good. I think they won a couple of times. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a friend of our, Jack Dean's, won it. Yeah. He'll tell you about that. Oh, he would Scotch. He'd love to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, though. It's doesn't happen much. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was all about the result for your school. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and then- you know, it was all obviously you develop pretty cool friendships, and, and but I think when it, it is now essentially like both of our lives, like we we mm. we revolve. Obviously, Jed's got a family, so he you know he's got a lot more sort of overheads in the sense that like he's got a lot more responsibility, and perhaps oh, I've just got like uni, but um, well, th- relative though, it's relative. But mm. I think that um, with having rowing being like a very central part of our lives like i think that the journey has definitely become a lot more of a that's epic man enjoyable part and that's Mm. basically like i think a lot of that is through jed Mm. um and just through being around people that are in the same boat all striving for like the same sort of thing but also there for the journey Mm. Um, nice use of nice use of in the same boat there bro i was gonna use that for the intro yeah that's great yeah Uh, it's Cleverest thing I'll say, old podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, example do you guys want to set? Oh, the, the example of like, there's probably many examples, but definitely the fact that, you know, life's a long game and you can fuck up, you can make heaps of mistakes, but if you stay, like, if you keep a pretty solid growth mindset and always wanting to get better yourself and your situation with respect to everyone around you, then I think those simple principles will be good, you know. So, you know, the inspiration thing, you know, it, you know, I, I, it's a very visual thing. You know, you can see my leg and, and what I'm doing, it's going to probably look inspirational. But, um, you know, whatever happens and whatever people can grasp from me, it just well, as long as it's a positive, a positive thing, you know. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, I think that I think definitely – um, and this doesn't go for just people with, you know, some sort of impairment or whatever. Like, I just think that it's so important to be grateful for everything um, and just be able to step back and, and, and look at, you know, what you got going, what you're going on and just not settling for second best. Like, I think that everyone should just absolutely have a crack at, at life, really. And, you know, that whole growth thing is a huge and I emphasize that a lot. I, like it's a big part of my mantra, like sort of just developing. But I think that yeah, it's all just a it's all just a journey, and you know it's it's important to to just take everything really positively. Yeah, you know? gratitude. And, and yeah, seeing for it, sure. Seeing that way as a as a journey and as a a lifestyle, and fostering that gratitude. What does that do for your actual results as a role? Do you think? I think it absolutely helps. Like mm. what, if you're talking one percenters and um, first of all, I mean, res- if we're talking results as rowers, um, like so if you're fostering gratitude, if you're positively mindset, if you're looking for growth and opportunity, then you're going to be performing at your best. So if we're talking about if that's your success bar and that's your measuring stick, how good you're doing in the boat, then it's all that's going to rub off and, and, and give you the best ability to do the best you can. So- for me, first of all, it's always been like, where's your success? Like, what is it, you know, is it a gold medal at the Tokyo Paralympics? Or what, it, you know, what, finding really what is your success? What, what is it? And then figuring it out from there. And there's so many aspects in life of what can be your success. So, you know, in your family, relationships, career, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, finding out what that is and then, you know, trying to head, like, that's your North Star, head toward that and, and chew down the goals and the, all the steps and the processes to get there. And as a rom- romantic analogy, there's so many instances in life where you're going to have to push for the line. Yeah. And so you guys know about that in the yeah. most visceral sort of way that you can draw that in your mind. Uh, and no matter who you are, you're going to have those instances where you're faced with, you're going to have to push here and you're either going to have what it takes or you're not going to. Mm. You know, and you guys know that sort of better than anyone. Yeah, yeah. It's brutal, man. It's a brutal sport, and that that brutal brutality is is one of the blessings of it because it's just it's just epic. I'm super yeah. biased, obviously. I haven't done too many other sports, yeah. but it's just crazy, and yeah, it's it's good. 
Yeah. yeah. But you guys want to obviously, you know, get that Tokyo gold medal as I'm sure is the overarching goal, but mm-hmm. probably deep down understand that even if you don't, it's still not 100% the mm. point. Yeah, 100%. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I made, I made like a connection last year in trials and, and what happens when, when you train every day, day in, day out and heading toward a goal that you think is the goal of, of making a team, um, you know, you just it's to to hang every single thing that you're doing every single day on that and that's all it's super dangerous i think you really got to have a bigger picture and i made a connection for myself about i sort of said to myself i said if what if i don't go what if i don't get in this boat for tokyo like everything that i've done all the shit that my wife's had to put up with me me going to europe here and she you know she's got a three-month-old baby here and a one-year-old and all of that like is it worth it and then it's, that's why it's the journey for me. But getting back to what I was saying, um, basically what I did was I released myself of the pressure. I said, it, it's not everything. If I don't get it, I'm good. I'm fine. I know I'm good. I know there's many chapters of this life. That's journey, my journey will just go on a different angle then and I'm, I'm good for it. And it's when not I, all for nothing. No. And when I released myself of that, I actually felt, that's a question I go, well, if I don't want, like, if I don't care, then do I want it? And then I said, no. And I asked myself this question, talking to myself, and I'm just like, no, I can oath I want it. I want it more than anything, but I'm cool if it doesn't happen. And then saying that, I'm like, now I'm super powerful. It doesn't matter if it doesn't happen. I don't, I'm not pressure. I don't, I'm, I've took taken that cloak of pressure off. Mm-hmm. So now if that cloak's not on my back, hold me down, I'm now- going to be able to go faster. I'm going to be able to go faster. <laughs> it's that feeling of- And you're going, the only one who can do that. Only well. one. And it's such a personal thing, man. you yeah. got to be cool with it. Like you got to be cool with saying that it's not everything mm. because like, but then also you got to be Treat saying it, like it, it is. is everything yeah. and do everything in your power to get there and, and, and playing with that. Like I get, I'm getting little goosebumps, whatever they're mm. called now thinking about that because that's, that's the- that's the perfect little edge for me. Yeah. And that's got to mm. be one of the toughest things for athletes to be able to yeah. do. Yeah, mm-hmm. and why some of them lose it after they stop, or yeah. when they don't get to the if they don't top. get there, right? Like yeah. if they don't get there, and why didn't they get there? If, if, especially if they've mm-hmm. been lining up, they should have got there. What is it? It's the pressure they put on themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you feel like you're able to take that off yourself as well? Will? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that um, you know, taking sort of a journ- journalistic, like like an approach that is, you know, like obviously, <clears throat> obviously, like if if Tokyo didn't work out for whatever reason. Like, I'm so grateful for whatever I've had. But, um, and, you know, like, I wouldn't be too, I'd be pretty, like, upset, but I wouldn't be too disappointed or anything because I've had such a cool, like, experience with, with everything anyway. And I think that's so, I think that's, you know, I think that's huge. And I think a lot of other athletes should, I think this should be taken into um, consideration with, you know, the mental side of things with with all athletes is like you really need to you really need to be able to you need, you need to love what you do because if you don't and like you don't enjoy the process of getting to where you're trying to get like and you do put all the pressure on yourself to get this one go- achieve this one goal you know like it's just going to be it's just mm-hmm. it's not really enjoyable because there is just like insurmountable amounts of pressure yeah on you and if it all rests on the result and then you don't get there you might not be able to get back up exactly yeah. right yeah yeah and i guess the you know without sounding cliche it's it's like look who you guys have become mm. and mm-hmm. so that's why it's it's not all for nothing and if you don't yeah. win it's not the end of the world because the point is that you become great men who have all those that attitude and that mindset and that drive to yeah. influence other people positively and bring something to the world yeah that said go and fucking win it yeah (laughs) (laughs) if you got something out of this episode please leave a comment and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts it really helps us grow the show so we can keep bringing you the content that matters if you want to stay up to date with what we're doing and get involved get onto the young blood podcast community facebook group and follow young blood podcast on instagram and if you're keen to get in touch with me email young blood podcast all one word at hotmail.com This podcast was produced by the talented Rory Noak at Podbooth. You can check them out at podbooth.com.au. This is Youngblood. Thanks for joining us. Catch you next time.